got your attention? I did. And those of us who've been in the armed forces, we recognize Reveille, we do. Title of the message, When the Trumpet Sounds. Um, Dr. David Jeremiah, many of you follow him on TV, watch his messages, send off his material, send him money. <laughs> he has a new book about the rapture. I haven't read it yet, but I want to. I'm looking forward to it. And he's preaching a series on the rapture. I'm not in his league, obviously. But what I want to share with you today, when the trumpet sounds, I believe comes directly from the Bible. I think it ties in closely with the Sunday school lesson this morning. Here's our background scripture. It's from 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, verses 13 through 18. I'm reading from the New King James this morning. Paul says, let me give you a little background first. Uh, the church at Thessalonica uh, thought that Jesus was going to come back at any time, any moment. I'm with the church at Thessalonica. I believe that. But they were worried. They didn't have all the background and theology and scripture and the information that we have that their loved ones who'd already fallen asleep, who died, would not share in that. And so Paul writes to them and to us to reassure them. Listen to what he said. I'm going to change the word ignorant to uninformed because that's really what that word should be. But I do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those who are dead, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. I've done a lot of funerals, 15 this year. A couple of them I didn't know. It's not my information, my knowledge. But a couple of them, I think the family was standing there, and they really had no hope. For if we believe, did you read the Sunday school lesson this morning? If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep dead in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain, and some of us may be here for that, until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Listen to this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. I have three thought, quick thoughts about when the trumpet sounds. When the trumpet sounds. Here we go. Thought number one. Where are we right now? Spiritually, in the rapture sequence, where are we? There are three main positions right now that people hold about the rapture. There's pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib. Let me just tell you up front, I am a pre-tribulation person. I don't think by reading the scriptures that the church will go through any part of the tribulation, but we may be getting very close to it. You watch the news, don't you? In the background scripture we just read, Paul lays out the sequence for the rapture. And by the way, <clears> the <throat> word rapture is not found anywhere in scripture. But neither is the word trinity. But we believe that. In fact, we had it demonstrated to us when Jesus got baptized that day. Remember? Jesus' Son coming up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove, and the voice of God the Father saying, This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So all three persons of the Trinity were present. I looked it up in the dictionary. Webster Dictionary defines rapture as intense pleasure or joy. Oh, if we're men, whisk away to heaven. What greater joy than that? 
There's another word that the scholars, I'm not one, you figured that out sometime back, sometimes use interchangeably with rapture. It is the word the parousia. What that refers to is the second coming of the Lord. And that's not going to occur until the rapture is over and the tribulation is over. Here's a sequence. Paul gave it to us. All the dead in Christ shall rise first. I thought, where would I like to be when the rapture comes? I wouldn't mind being standing up at Little Bethel Cemetery in Ideal, Georgia. There's a grave there that says Effie and one that says Roger is my mama and daddy. I'd like to be standing and I'd say, come on, mama, daddy, let's go join the Lord in the sky. All the dead in Christ shall rise first. All of those who've died in Christ will be taken up and they'll be given their glorified bodies. Some of those bodies we know have been cremated. Others have been buried so long they've been decayed away. Some bodies have been completely lost. We have no idea where they are. <clears throat> During the Vietnam War, a young man went to Vietnam and was killed there. Bomb blast. They couldn't find any part of it. They couldn't even find his dog tags. And you can imagine how his mother felt. And a preacher, a pastor, this is what we get paid for. I preach because I like to do it. And y'all put up with me. Pastor went to her and he said, Mama, it's okay. Your son was saved. I baptized him. And Mama, the U.S. Army may not be able to find him, but praise God, that old trumpet will find him. Next in the sequence, those of us who are still alive will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. What will the signal be? Great shout. Hallelujah. Glory. Maybe. This is Phil's chapter 1 and 2, and that's all it is. I believe he's going to call my name. I believe he's going to call my name. He knows your name. If you know him as Lord and Savior, he has his, your name engraved on the palm of his hand. Does he have your name? Remember that day when Jesus went to Lazarus' grave four days late? He didn't say, come forth. If he had, everybody in the cemetery got up. No, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the trumpet blast, that's going to signal that. How long is it going to take for all this to happen? We're talking about millions of people. Well, Paul over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, gives us the thing. Here's how it's going to happen. In the twinkling of an eye. Listen to what Paul says about it. 1 Corinthians 15. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the rapture. Thought number two. What is it going to be like? Went to the movie, Left Behind. Been a, some of you have seen this. Many of you have. And I asked Lisa to pull a video sequence from the movie, Left Behind. I believe it depicts accurately what that moment of rapture is going to be like from the viewpoint, from the viewpoint of those who are left behind. It's in an airplane. Ladies, roll the video. Watch carefully. Where are you? Ma'am, 
Is everything okay? It's my husband. He, he's disappeared. You know what? I bet he just slipped off to the restroom while you were asleep. Would you mind checking, please? Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. And take this. Ma'am? I think he's gone off naked. I'll be right back. Might be what it's like at the rapture for those who left behind. Which group will you be in? All right, thought number three. Rapture ready? Jesus said, no one knows the moment that he's going to return, except the Father. If you've not read Matthew chapter 24 lately, I encourage you to do so. 
long list of signs of the times that I believe the time is approaching. You watch the news? Wars, earthquakes, violence, the falling away from the faith. Some pulpits are preaching things that are contrary to the Word of God. Obviously, I don't know the moment of his return. But I believe it will be very soon. I ask you this morning, are you rapture ready? In the video we just watched, obviously there were many who were not. But you can be. Today, this moment. Will you stand with me, please? Jesus says in John's Gospel, chapter 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Do you know him as Lord and Savior? If you don't, you're not rapture ready. I encourage you, if he's spoken to your heart and life, you come now. You come now. You have a church family where you can tag up and say, that's my home base. That's why I worship and serve the Lord. Please come. Do you need prayer? Please come. Whatever he's speaking to you about, don't delay.